Hello, everybody. I am going to talk to you today about Mars' journey through the sign of Scorpio. It's going to be rather intense, hence the interesting background. And um, before I start, if I could ask you to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I'm slowly recovering from that COVID, but I've still got ear problems and um, fatigue. So forgive me if I'm not kind of fully sparkly, although I'm feeling OK right now. So we'll see. <laughs> but anyway, Mars moved into the sign of Scorpio late yesterday on October the 11th. So um, as part of my recovery of COVID, I'm a little bit behind on everything, but um but here's Mars. Um, as soon as Mars moved into Scorpio, it was conjunct Haumea. I'll talk about that in a minute. And um, was also in a quincunx with Sedna, all those zero degree things. I just want to take one thing out of this chart. OK, there we go. And and of course, as we as Mars enters the sign of Scorpio and Mars, it, this is, um, you know, Scorpio was traditionally ruled by the side of, uh, by the planet Mars. The modern rulership is Pluto. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but Mars, that means that Mars is comfortable in Scorpio, but I always think of it as psychic surgery. And um, because we are also um, at the Pluto station point, Pluto is at this minute, 27 degrees and 53 minutes until the 17th. And because we are in the dark moon heading into the eclipse, the, the solar annular eclipse that's happening on the 14th, this is a real deep dive. And I'm I'm starting to see people really kind of um kind of get in and as if to kind of emphasize it, at least for me where I am in Utah, the weather has gone really cold and dark and gloomy and wet. It's absolutely poured with rain um for the last day or so. Because Scorpio is a water sign and, and Scorpio actually, well, all the water signs, but I particularly Scorpio I find can be associated with flooding as well. So we're going to dive in, you know, Mars in Scorpio, potent, passionate, um, really digging in to the uh, fertile, uh, deep waters of Scorpio where secrets are hidden and, uh, you know, where the deepest psyche is as well and where power games and manipulation can hang out. It's also, uh, you know, hugely uh, powerful empowering energy if you choose to lean into it because Scorpio is really determined but you can feel how the intensity just from those words and anybody that has a Scorpio in their life or has strong Scorpio placements will know that Scorpio is a very intense sign um it's I I like Scorpio not everybody does but the shadow of Scorpio is that it can sting as well so bear in mind, uh, whilst Mars is going through the sign of Scorpio, all those energies are going to be up because it's how we respond to the energies. That, Here's what I um, found. Oh, my watch is talking to me. The um, It's how we respond to the energies that counts. So uh, when Mars entered Scorpio, I mentioned that it immediately conjuncted Haumea. That's the uh, dwarf planet of fertility and creation and she moved finally into the sign of Scorpio recently and will be there for about 20 years but that also means and let me draw my lines because this is really important that Mars and Haumea are squaring zero degrees Aquarius which is where um uh, Saturn and Jupiter met for the great mutation, which wasn't just a great conjunction. That happened on December the 21st, 2021, I think. I'll check that in a minute. We'll go back and look. But following that, there was also a Venus-Mars conjunction at zero Aquarius. And Pluto moved into Aquarius and sat at that degree for a little while earlier this year. And Pluto is moving back to that degree once he starts moving forward into back into Aquarius. 
it's also the exact degree zero Aquarius of a um, Venus Ser series Pluto conjunction that's happening on December the 7th, 2024. So it's a really hot degree. And whilst Mars squares this degree every couple of years, of course, um, from Scorpio, um, this one is especially intense because Haumea and Pluto as well are in this ongoing square. We've had four of the exact uh, 13 exact squares. I wrote an article which I'll share in the description and we've got more squares to come. We've got nine more squares to come until 2000 and that 2028. So this ingress into the sign of Mars is not just a regular ingress into the sign of Mars. It's entering the most deep, intense, watery sign in um, the dark of the moon as we're approaching an eclipse with Pluto, the modern ruler of Scorpio, at a standstill. And Mars and Pluto have also just had a square. So this is a really, um, a really strong and intense entry into the sign of Scorpio, which is kind of going to set the scene. All right. So I'm just going to clear that line and we're going to look at the other aspects, but just know that this is going to be a really deep period. Okay. It's, um, it's going to cut deep. I think the psychic surgeon kind of energy of Mars in Scorpio is going to cut deeply into any um, kind of uh, psychological issues and things may come up um, or, you know, it's a good time to really do some therapeutic work, but it's also going to reveal some deep and dark secrets and power games and manipulation that may have um, um, been going on behind the scenes. And I think we can see that starting to happen, but it's going to intensify with Mars in Scorpio. Can't separate it, of course, from the eclipses. We can't also, we've got Eris and the North Node approaching an exact conjunction on November the 27th, just three days after Mars leaves Scorpio. And Aries, Aries is Mars' own home sign. And Eris in the myth is his sister. So this is very aggressive, very um cutting energy but it also can be uh, the kind of energy where you can really drive through the Sabian symbol I think no it's the Chandra symbol for it was um, was saying something about uh, let me find that symbol for you and I'll just read it in case you don't subscribe to my subscribe stack blog um, the um, Chandra symbol is a tunnel through a mountain. And um, it, the commentary is that this degree cares not how difficult something may be. It will work to get where it's going, no matter how much effort it has to put forth. It's very aware of all life's obstructions and of everything blocking its path. It also knows that everything is attainable and its desire is always to take the direct approach. That's Mars as well. Even if that means having to tunnel through a mountain. So you can just feel the intensity of it. So this is a real uh, time to dig in, lean in. Oh, I'm just going to clear that line. Uh, lean into it, push through um, lots of self-care so that you are nurtured. And by self-care, I mean good sleep, good eat, you know, looking after yourself, I don't mean pampering, and really kind of eating well, sleeping well, um, um, doing walks, things like that, you know, routines, discipline, really leaning in. Scorpio can be a really disciplined sign. So that's kind of the start of it. Wow. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to go through the other aspects, but I just kind of wanted to set the scene for you. And so, you know, how intense this is. And um, there is going to be some very intense aspects through uh, this journey that's only till November the 24th. So it's only just um, about six weeks. So this is a big, um, 
a big transit, to be quite honest, because it's taking us through those eclipses right up to almost up to this conjunction of Eris and the North Node. And um, Mars is going to pretty much aspect all the major players in the chart. Started with that square to Pluto before he entered Scorpio. Pluto at the standstill. The next one is tomorrow on Friday the 13th. <laughs> Sorry, I should not laugh. But um, Mars still at that zero degree mark is going to um, trine Saturn, another water sign with Saturn in retrograde in Pisces. Now, Saturn and Mars are often said to be one foot on the throttle, one foot on the brake. But uh, and so but it's also got great grit and determination again. And to my mind, Saturn retrograde in Pisces has been asking us to let go of a lot of blocks and boundaries and limiting beliefs about I can't do this or I always do this. And this is going to ask help enable us to wash away a lot of these issues. But also it's Mars and Saturn, and Saturn is retrograde, and Mars is strong in Scorpio. I would not be surprised of, about hearing about some floods, uh, flooding basements, flooding places, uh, floods of emotion. It's powerful, and it pushes, and they're pushing towards each other. So, you know, this could be um, like dams breaking, that kind of energy as well. It's kind of quite earthquakey. So I'm just checking the news, actually, because I've been out uh, shortly just to make sure nothing like that's happening already. But of course, we can see also Mars and Saturn are very kind of head to head kind of energies. We can see that also happening in the world. And and so um, just know that even though it's a trine, which are, you know, that means generally that things will take the easiest path, like water does. Water finds its way into things. So it's a water trine. I think um, I think it's going to bring some big kind of purging, some emotions, but also the ability to kind of cleanse and wash things uh, away. So the uh, next aspect is one I probably would not look at normally, but I am going to. It's actually uh, because um, it's happening right after the eclipse. So we've got the eclipse um, on the 14th and then the moon moves into the sign of Scorpio and conjuncts Mars. And this is still really in aspect to it. So we've got this eclipsed moon really kind of pushing forward as well. The moon being our emotions. So this is going to add to our emotions that are going to really build up over the weekend. You know, an eclipse on its own is often enough. This is really kind of strong energy. So really pay attention to the self-care piece. OK, and, and to kind of stay in your lane, stay out of. Um, you know, battles that are not yours, all kinds of energy like that. All right. So, <laughs> whoa, it's such a powerful time. Now, the next aspect I'm going to look at, well, I'm actually not going to look at an aspect immediately. I am just going to mention that on the 15th, um, is it the 15th? No, the 18th. Mars is actually going to be at Apogee which actually means it's furthest away from the Earth. And, and so that, um, you know, means that it's a little bit, uh, the impact is a little bit less, which is actually a little bit helpful to my mind. But it also might mean that it's a little bit harder to access some of that determination and strength that Mars in Scorpio can bring. So you're really going to probably have to lean into it. Okay. Now then, here's where things um, well, it starts very strong. <laughs> and then into next week, we have Mars. These are, are less, um, I'm going to look at them both together. Together. Bear with me, I'm just going to move on. So to the 20th, right, uh, with Mars right at F Apogee, okay. 
that actually with the moon moved to Capricorn. So here's Mars in Scorpio, um, sextiling Pholus, uh, the Pandora's box, the deck of cards falling, the house of cards falling down um, um, Centaur. And uh, just afterwards, trining Vesta. Now, as I record this, we yesterday uh, we had a Pholus Vesta opposition, which is really um, all this stuff that's coming out in the world is making us feel um, very insecure and um, security wise um, for the state and probably personally, especially if you have any energies around uh, five, six degrees of the cardinal signs, and that's Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Add to that, that new eclipse moon <laughs> is um, about oh, just less than a week in, heading towards the first quarter moon. So we're heading to that time between eclipses, but the moon also passes fullness just before that. So bringing in that emotional um, roller coaster kind of thing. So even though this is a sextile and a trine, again, this, this forms a wedge pattern. This is a really strong one as well. So, you know, things are going to keep being revealed and it could be in your life. It could be the global things. It could be like the lids come off and changes coming. And um, I've got to pay attention to what's not working and what um, I where I want to move forward and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's the 20th and the 22nd. The trine will happen from Mars to Vesta. And then things get even more. Because <laughs> remember, we're always also in this um, eclipse tunnel uh, for all of October. So the next one. And of course, I'll be looking at these individually in detail as well on my Substack blog, which I write on daily. So on October the 28th, Mars will move all the way to 11 degrees, that master number, that gateway number. Mercury will be conjunct Mars on that day, and it's going to be opposing Jupiter in Taurus. Now, that's activating some of the eclipse energy for the last couple of years and we're in the middle of the eclipses. OK, so and, you know, we're about to have the full moon eclipse the next day. So things are intense again as Mars opposes Jupiter. This could be literal earthquake, earthquakes, landslides um, of all kinds, emotionally, news, um, things about those manipulation, power plays, power imbalances. And it's big with Jupiter there, because just to look at these energies, if I draw the lines, um, Mercury, um, in fact, this is literally like very right on the eclipse. So the eclipse is right after it because we can see that the two degree Taurus moon is about to oppose the four degree Scorpio sun. They will both move to five degrees and they will oppose each other. And I'll be doing a, a separate podcast for the uh, lunar eclipse. So this really is on the eclipse. Sco all this intense Scorpio energy. Asteroid Lilith has also moved into the sign of Scorpio by then. She's the talk to the hand Lilith. So there's also a lot coming up about around um, uh, abortion rights and things like that for women. But also your your place as a woman you know, um, or as a, a, a female or mother, if you are a woman. Um, but there's also this deeply, deeply emotional with Haumea, Asteroid Lilith, the Sun, Mercury conjunct Mars and Ceres over here, um, all kind of opposing this Taurus energy on the eclipse. It's, it's um, a very big eclipse actually even though it's a kind of a partial lunar eclipse we can't we can't just look at the eclipse we've got to look at everything else that's happening around it and this as i mentioned this mars jupiter opposition is on an 11 degree which is also kind of a master number it's um, a challenging but powerful number i think there's going to be some huge news come out 
um, around by the end of this month, by that full moon eclipse shining both the moon and the sun on the world. And it's going to be around some of these big power players in the world. But for you, this is a very, very emotional eclipse. It's huge. You And again, to kind of build all the things on it, it's around feeling like the world's kind of falling apart at some point. So self-care, ground, get in, get good sleep, eat well, look after yourself and um, and get support if you need help as well weathering the storm this is a really big month so then well the ne very next day mercury will actually conjoin mars so around that eclipse you know um there's secrets going to be revealed things we've not seen before um it both in the world and i think in uh, some people's personal lives but it can also be kind of secrets you've kind of hidden from yourself Things that you've kept very buried may emerge to be dealt with and processed. So be aware of that as well. So into November. So we start to ease from the eclipses, but oh boy, this is an intense journey. We've still got that Eris North Node conjunction to be exact, of course. And of course, the nodes were um, the eclipses are always on the nodes. But we're going to move into November anyway, and Mars um, is going to trine another centaur on November the 3rd, Nessus. Okay, so Mars has moved to now 15 degrees. Now, 15 degrees of the fixed signs, which are <laughs> uh, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and um, Aquarius are world points so they're hot degrees as well and mars will reach the 15th degree and try nessus in pisces nessus tends to reveal abuses of power so i think you can probably see where that's going with what i've said about already on the day of the eclipse and around that lunar eclipse about big news hidden things coming up there's going to be a lot coming out about abuses of power this is such a big um point of um uh release purging but uh you know will we how will, will we respond to this some of it could be quite shocking but especially with the next big aspect that's coming up mars on november the 11th which is actually isn't that armistice day um in the in europe at least <sighs> i wonder i don't think there's ever any accident to be quite honest the moon has moved all the way back around into scorpio intensifying that emotion right so we've still got this really strong scorpio energy mars is heading towards ceres which is grief loss but also what well, how we nurture and nourish ourselves and others and Mars opposes Uranus. But again, I'm going to get my lines going. So this forms a T-square to 20 degrees Leo, which was the new Venus um, oh, star point. OK. Um, on August the 13th, 13th this year, um, Venus and the sun met in the middle of her retrograde at 20 degrees Leo, and they were in square to Uranus at that time. I know this is not an exact square, but that's um, that's activating it anyway. And um, Venus is morning star. Now, interestingly, Venus um, rises very quickly as morning star in the east, and she's associated with war by uh, with many um, cultures. Now, Venus has is starting to descend at this point. That doesn't mean she's not morning star anymore, but she's slowing down her role. She's not um, she she's um, not as assertive. Venus morning star after the conjunction rises really fast, 72 days and then takes over 200 days to slow down and start being not as high, rising as high in the morning sky. Um, I'm not going to go fully into the explanation, but the day that Hamas attacked um, in Israel, uh, Venus crossed 
the point she had been retrograde at as this morning star. Incidentally, her maximum elongation was on October the 23rd. So then she started to descend after that, right in the middle of the eclipses. But this is activating the star point when she became morning star on August the 13th. By that point, true black moon Lilith is back um, conjunct that point. OK, so this is a strong activation. Um, Mars is heading towards that conjunction with Ceres. Uranus is retrograde, revisiting some stuff from the first squares with Venus back in the retrograde. This is likely to cause um, breakthroughs, but also breakdowns, shocks, surprises, big aha moments. Black Moon Lilith is often a um, associated with um, issues of shame, where you feel shame, where you've been shamed. It may be collective shame. It may be individual shame. Depends on your own chart. But this is a powerful one as well. This is um, a T-square as well, which is a tense, tense energy that's forcing change. OK, so again, another powerful, powerful object um, um, aspect on um, November the 11th, which is um, in itself a powerful day. So make a note of that day and kind of make sure you're kind of lying low because that's also quite um, shocking. Lord of lightning bolts, earthquakey kind of energy, both literally and um, figuratively as well. So, you know, I, I always love to be going, oh, things are going to be lovely. But quite honestly, you know, some people will be just fine, but it's how we respond to what's going on out there that really is what matters, you know. And then on the 18th of November, oh, let me clear that, those lines. On the 18th of November, um, Mercury has moved out of Scorpio by then, but Mars and the Sun meet and they're very close to Ceres. And so you can see that there could be some probably emerging from what's come before it. There could be some real sense of uh, grief, collective grief, um, but also um, a real uh, push to um, nurture you and yours and your own security and sustainability. So, so that's... Um, November the 18th we're nearly done because of course then Mars uh, will conjunct Ceres just a couple of days later so that's on November the 23rd the sun at that point will have moved into Sagittarius so happy birthday Sagittarius and that's me <laughs> but um Mars and Ceres meet at the anoretic which is the very last degree which is a a challenging degree which is a liminal degree things are changing it's a pressure it's like a bit of a pressure cooker when you release the valve you know and really this is in a sextile to um, uh, Pluto uh, who's now moved back to 28 degrees and remember Pluto is the modern ruler of Scorpio and Mars is the traditional ruler of Scorpio that's a really and it's a sextile but you know I think um, uh, structures will fall governments will fall dams could break again but uh, as without so within just really you know this period is really a powerful one and then we're going to finish with one last um So on the day that um, Mars leaves the sign of Scorpio, he makes one last degree um, aspect at that anoretic degree. Sedna has moved back into Gemini and, um, well, you know, um, ignore the T-square for now, actually. But Sedna is revisiting the sign of Taurus, um, where she last was um, at the end of the Ice Ages, at the change of big um um, ages into the Neolithic age, the New Stone Age, which was a time of um, 
really how humans completely changed how they lived on this earth. And that is activating that opposition as Sedna revisits Taurus for a while before she moves back into Gemini permanently for a long time. But this is, of course, on the Pleiades over here, too. So, you know, it's activating some um, stars and so on. We've still got Ceres at 29 degrees, all this 29 degrees stuff forming this um, wedge pattern to Pluto over here in Capricorn. The end of that journey of Mars in Scorpio is as challenging as the rest. So I wish I could be the bearer of good news, but I do think this, um, you know, I go back to that symbol again that I read for you. You know, the fact that you can push through, it needs determination, it needs diligence, it needs a lot of self-care, it needs a lot of emotional support. But it's kind of a bit dark days, a bit like this, kind of a bit like pushing through a dark tunnel for many, you know, and collectively, I think, as well. So much self-care, um, get support where you need it. And um, I will see you on the next video. So much love to you. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Check the little bell and you'll get notified when I upload new videos. Much love to you.